film. Um, was it as good as it looked to all of us watching it the first time? You know, uh, I, I pretty much watched the film on my own just because we had a victory Monday today. We didn't have work yesterday. We didn't have work. You know, it was uh, you know a hard-fought win, and, and he rewarded the guys with a day off of work. So you, so you so haven't even what? you haven't even dug into it quite yet. Okay, well then tell us this: How did it feel when you walked off the field? Because again, you give up 13 points to Justin Herbert. He's pretty good. Well, you know, you know, obviously I didn't play, but you know, the one thing like I would say though is just that you know the vibe and the energy of of the guys is just like you know no one expected us to win that game, and, and you know you, we've been hearing this crap all all year about everyone. You know, everyone, no one really believes in us. Everyone thinks, we, you know, we lose. We're going to lose any competitive game that we have to play. But, you know, the guys went out there and they really did it. And, they, and they, they, you know, defense played a hell of a game. You know, offense did what they had to do to come out with a W. And so it's just, you know, that that's the, you know, that's the momentum we need going into this week. So how are you feeling? Give us an update. Are you feeling okay? Yeah, man, I'm feeling good, man. You know, just uh, – I rolled up on in practice on Thursday, and I and I and I, you know, I've been saying this that I feel like if it would have happened on like a Monday, I would have been able to make it back for the game. But you know, I'm feeling good, and and you know, the ankle is feeling good, and you know, I, you know, can't wait for Sunday. Is that any more frustrating when you have to deal with an injury like that in practice, and you're just like, I'm just getting ready for a game? Ah, crap. Man, like I've never you know got hurt in practice before, so. It was just, you know, it was very, very frustrating just from the fact of, like, you know, you know, I was just, you know, excited to play. You know, I love playing the Chargers. I feel like, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a great competitive game every time we play. So, it's, you know, it's, it's just frustrating. But, you know, luckily, I avoided anything serious. And so, you know, and that, that's, that's the positive out of it. Can you talk to, to us about your teammate Patrick Sertan? I don't always like to ask vets about rookies. One time Steve Berline told me, they're just numbers till they do something to make me remember them. I got to imagine, though, Patrick Sertan, though, has made you remember him. What do you think of the young rook? What's what's he done so right in his rookie year to get to this level? You know, he's just getting, you know, he's just getting better and better. And, and you know, he, he definitely doesn't, you know, hold, you know, like move around like he's a rookie. He, he just, uh, you know, the level of insight that he knows, like he has in his defense and, and just, you know, the plays that he's been making. You know, a lot of his defense has been asking him to, you know, go man, man-on-man coverage, you know, by himself a lot. And he's been over there holding his own. And, you know, just, you know, he's way above, you know, way ahead what you expect a rookie to be doing. And, and you know, I'm just happy that, uh, you know, we got him on our team. The secondary in general, I mean, just is absolutely clicking right now. Uh, Fuller, Darby, Simmons, Kareem. I mean, you guys just have so many good players on that back end. Um, look, look, Shelby, you've been on, you know, you've been on NFL teams with great secondaries. You've been on NFL teams with not so great secondaries. How does that make a difference for the guys in the front seven? Like, uh, like an appreciable difference that you feel as you're playing the game. Man, you just. You know, you just feel like you're gonna have time to get home. You know, you feel like you're gonna have, you know, it, it's not just gonna be open. People just running open all the time. And you have, you know, all the players that we have, you know, in the back and, and in the front, you know, and then with our front seven, you know, like the, they went, you know, this week they shut down the run and made them pretty much a one-dimensional team. And and you know that that's a testament of like this whole team and, and the depth that we have with this whole team and. You know, and honestly, one thing I want to say real quick is, you know, you look at all the injuries we have and you look at all the young guys that have come up and stepped up, and, and that's a testament of, of, of what this team really is. You know, in order for us to get to where we got to want to want to go, you know, people from number one on the roster, number 53 on the roster, we're going to need them to step up and make some plays. And so, you know, you're, you're seeing that now on both sides of the ball, these young guys over here, you know, stepping up in big spots. And so, you know, I'm really excited for what all these young guys can do. A couple more guys. Are you, have you been impressed? I've been impressed with both Kenny Young and Baron Browning. And Baron, I, Baron made a couple of really nice plays to force some three and outs. And I keep thinking of the batted ball he jumped up and and, and got it. Looked like maybe he uh, Adam Archuleta said he thought he maybe drifted from his coverage, but got up there and made a play. Have you been impressed with the two guys that have had to step in at linebacker after the two big injuries early in the year? Yeah, man. Just a. Uh... You know, both of them, like, Baron was hurt, you know, a lot of camp and then uh, a little bit of the season. So, coming in on, you know, uh, light, like, you know, uh, 
limited reps and, and going out there playing the way he does. And for Kenny, you know, coming from the Rams, you know, they run the kind of the same defense as we do, but, you know, our defense is a little bit more, um, a, a lot more to it. So, you know, just for him to catch up on it, for both those guys to catch up on it and be playing as fast as they are, you know, and, and that's really, you know, it's a special thing you don't get very often. And, and you know, they're, they're out there playing their tails off. And, and it's just, uh, you know, I, we, I don't know where we are without those two. You know, so, you know, I'm, I'm excited that, you know, they're, they're playing that level of, of football. I mean, speaking of that, uh, Stephen Weatherly, McTelvin Ajim, and Deshaun Williams were the guys that had sacks against Justin Herbert uh, last week, which, I mean, I, I guess in a sense, all three of those guys are sort of technically reserves, although they are rotational players. But right now, the the depth of your defense right now, you're out of a game like that, and yet you didn't really see production fall off at all. What does that mean for this group of, like, you just know – Hey, this rotation up front, everybody can step on the field and make plays. Yeah, and I think the, you know that's that's the beauty of it, though. It's like when one player goes out, there's no drop off. You know, we all we always preach, you know, bring the you know bring the, the next guy along with you, and, and you know, especially with D line wise, we work we work, you know, we work hard during the week, and so you know, we make sure that you know all the young guys are are just right there with us when it comes to game planning, when it comes to the way we practice. You know, because then in those situations where we do have somebody, or, you know, and that goes for every position, but then it goes when you do have some a player that's out, a veteran player on the side, and a young guy has to step in. You know, there is no drop off in, in play. There is there is no more drop in. You know, there is no type of drop off, and so you know that's you know all that is a testament of what we do during the week is what they do, and you know what you see them do on Sunday. All right. So what's the key to getting after this Chiefs team? Shelby, let's be honest. You guys went to Arrowhead last year and had a hell of a defensive performance. Didn't quite work out, work out offensively, but you guys held that team down from its usual, uh, its usual scoring output. And many credit the game plan you had that the Bucks kind of put into their own motion to beat them in the Super Bowl. So, what's the key to you guys holding them down this year's version of it? No, I would just say you know the, the biggest way is we got to stop the run. We got to rush the passer. You know, a lot of, you know, the, the Chiefs routes, a lot of them, you know, are longer routes. And, and, you know, obviously Mahomes extends plays a lot, you know, with his legs and his arms. He can extend, the, you know, he can definitely extend the field. And, you know, with any good quarterback, the way you get it, the way you can flush them is just by hitting them. You know, getting them off, off his point, you know, maybe making them move around in the pocket, you know, just, just constant pressure. And so, you know, if we can go out there and achieve that, then we'll have a good day. And then also I think a big thing is uh, time of possession. You know, I think these teams are, you know, beating the Chiefs because they're holding on to the ball longer. They make these it's the same these long drives, and then their defense is getting off the field. So, you know, we, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of things we need to do, but I definitely think time possession and, uh, you know, and and you know, pass rush is uh, definitely, uh, you know, key to getting the win. Shelby Harris uh, with us as he is every Tuesday afternoon. Shelby, it's a big story on the outside. The Broncos have lost eleven in a row to the chiefs. Um, obviously the guys in the locker room, you know, weren't a part of all 11 of those losses, but there's a lot of dudes in that room that have never beaten the chiefs before in a Broncos uniform. Is, is that a thing? Is that a rallying point for this team that this is a streak that absolutely has to get snapped? No, nah, man, we're worried about, you know, going like, honestly, like, you know, we haven't really talked about that much, but you know, what we're talking about the most is the fact that, you know, nobody really expected us to beat the Chargers and nobody really expected us to beat the Chiefs, you know, but we wouldn't have beat the Chiefs for first in division. And then it really doesn't matter what people say. You know, like we go out there, you got to go out there and just, you know, and play. Like if this, like when's the last time that we've been in a meaningful game in December? You know, like that, that that's the thing. When's the last time that we, we were over here fighting for first in division in December? And so... You know, if, if you don't need any rallying cry, if you, you don't you don't need anything to get your juices going, this is what you live for. This this is what we do it for. Everything that we want is right in front of us. It, it, it takes no type of extra motivation. You don't need any extra type of uh, of, of pep talk at all. It's what do you want? Because what you want and what we've been working for is right in front of us. Man, Shelby Harris must have been listening to the Crackman and Lindall show yesterday. All right, Shelby, Teddy Bridgewater. 
Um, he, he takes that hit from Derwin James, suffers the shin injury. He's obviously hobbled. Um, you know, that first series of the third quarter wasn't exactly pretty, but then fourth quarter, you know, touch 80 yard touchdown drive after the Sertan interception, Teddy was five of six for 70 yards on that drive. Um, wh- what did that mean to the team to have Teddy Bridgewater fight his way through that injury and get his way back out there and keep battling? Yeah, you just saw you saw him battling, so you couldn't help but go out there and battle. You know, like he's over here fighting through injuries, you know, trying to help us, you know, lead us to a champion, lead us to a, a win. And, and so it's like you couldn't help but go fight, you know, fight for the guy. You know, Teddy's out there busting his butt and 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 you know, getting he's hobbled and he goes out there and just making plays. You know what I mean? And 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 that's the thing is like it, it just hypes everyone else up to go out there and make plays behind him. And and that's. You know, that's really the thing is, you know, he's just being a silent leader. He's going out there leading by example. You know, everyone knows Teddy was hurting, and he went out there and he, he did his thing. And so, you know, the, the rest of the team had to go follow. And, and that's the thing. It's like when you have somebody like that that's going to go out there and, and grind and give you everything you got, you know, that's going to uplift the whole team. All right, Shelby, it's My Cause, My Cleats week. I saw you tweet yours out. Tell everybody about the cause you put on your cleats. Uh, my cause is called – the F Pies Foundation and F Pies is food protein induced enchilitis syndrome. And so what it is like my youngest son, uh, Shelby Jr. has F Pies and it's kind of like a dairy allergy, but you don't get hives. You don't, you know, you don't get the normal allergy symptoms. You know, my son will get violently ill and throw up and become lethargic. And so, um, you know, and like have no energy and just like, you know, you have to take them in and, and get IV and get fluids and stuff. You know, he's not even a year yet. And so, um, you know, it's a, it's, it's a very hard thing to diagnose because it's not a specific test, you know, for it. And it's just, you know, my goal is just to bring a little bit more awareness to it because when my son was going through it, you know, some of the doctors necessarily weren't listening to what our pediatrician or what we had to say about it. And they kept poking him and, and prodding him and, 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 and instead of just, you know, listening to us about, you know, what was – you know, what, what had occurred for him to go through these episodes. And, you know, it's, it's just trying to bring awareness out there to what f is. And, like, you know, like I said, there is no necessarily test for it. And so you kind of just have to really, like, go down the checklist and, and see if it fits for you. I mean, Shelby, I will I will fully admit ignorance to f I didn't really know anything about it. But but tell us a little bit more about what that process is like because, you know, you, you go into doctors, you will see multiple different doctors and specialists, and just trying to get things narrowed down and the process of finally getting to a place where you have a diagnosis, a correct diagnosis, and an actual workable plan – to get through that, that must have really sucked, obviously, for for your family, but definitely for your son. Well, yeah, it's just like, you know, that's the thing. It's like, it was breaking my heart watching him get poked, and, you know, he had to get a couple of spinal taps, and, you know, it's just, it's like, it's just nothing that, you know, a parent should have to see their kid go through, and, you know, the doctor tried to say that he was, like, epileptic or something, like, we're like, no, like, this, he's not having a seizure, <laughs> like, you know, it's like, and, like, they just, you know, the doctor just wouldn't listen to us at first and and then you know the second so it happened twice within like two weeks of each other of having to go to the hospital and then the second the second time you know the doctor was you know way you know listening way more and 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 way more open to our suggestions and that's how we figured it out but you know the saddest thing is you know just watching your kids squirm getting poked and and there's no way to uh comfort them and you know it's it's it's, it's really sad and it's heartbreaking but you know that's why you know it's you, you, I want to bring awareness to this. Well, Shelby, man, thanks for coming on the show telling us about us. Food protein induced enterocolitis syndrome, F pies. That is uh, the My Cause, My Cleats that Shelby Harris is going with. Big number 96 right here, getting ready to take on Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. Uh, Shelby, man, thank you so much for joining us on the show. Best of luck this week. And hey, go, go beat the Chiefs, man. Get win number seven. Let's do this thing. Like the playoffs are very much within reach. We want to keep talking to you about it. Oh, yeah, man. Appreciate you guys having me on.
All right, there we go. Big number 96, Shelby Harris with us right there on a Tuesday afternoon, as he typically is. By the way, Andy, one other uh, note from the front seven in that game, Draymond Jones, a career-high seven quarterback pressures, tracked in next-gen stats right there. Seven quarterback pressures, Draymond Jones consistently getting that pressure up the middle, which he's right about that. Now Mahomes can friggin' move back there, but... If you if you do things like that, it will make his life a little bit tougher. And as we have seen with Mahomes, that's when the accuracy wanes is when he makes when he has to make far too many throws on the move. And I know those are the highlights. Those are the plays that he typically makes. But that's also been what teams have been able to do to him to actually make him struggle a little bit this year. Yeah, 